As part of efforts to improve the growth of non-interest finance in Nigeria, Trust Bank Athol Limited, a fully licensed non-interest investment, hosted its maiden investment forum in Lagos, which discussed the theme projecting the future of non-interest capital market in Nigeria. It was an opportunity for the forum to address issues in the non-interest finance market. The event brought together royal fathers, stakeholders and participants from financial regulators, portfolio management companies, non-interest banks, PFAs, insurance takafu companies, digital platforms, and law firms. Speaking on the existence of non-interest finance in Nigeria, one of the pioneers of the industry and the first managing director of Jai's Bank, Alaji Mohammed Bin Tube, in his goodwill message, shared what needs to be done for the market to make significant progress. First, I would like to thank the organizers, uh, Trust Bank, Arthur, and to the other supporters to bring the stakeholders of non-interest finance uh, in the Nigerian financial system together at this very important forum. Um, in terms of direction, I have, I would like to humbly offer one or two suggestions. Number one, um, we have to connect to the knowledge economy just like the Taiwans and the Singapore players are doing. We have to innovate our way to success. So innovation, number one, and link up to the knowledge economy. Number two, we have to non-interest finance institutions. We have to you know, embrace FinTech and other disruptive initiatives, other disruptive ventures, if we want to make progress. Number three, we have to be dissatisfied with the status quo. I just listed that we have ABC, uh, but we have to be dissatisfied and, you know, embrace positive change and forge ahead. Um, finally, I would like to leave you with these uh, powerful insights from Henry Ford. He said, whether you think you can or you can't, you're right. Um, so I would like to throw a challenge to this August buddy that together we can make it, that the next 10 years, our target should be to aim to have non-interest finance in the banking sector assets at least 10% within the next 10 years. So at least 1% per annum. The MDC of Trust Bank Arthur Limited, Dr. Basha Oshodi, at the event gave a presentation on the theme projecting the future of non-interest capital markets in Nigeria. So we started just 2013 when we had the Oshosu Cook. You know, at this time, we want to actually because the capital market seems to have a lot of potentials, and because you can have a lot of things off your balance sheets, it then means that we can build heavily on that strength, right? I have a lot of our projects in form of Sukuk, but we need all the parties to come together to do this. Immediately we do that, it means that one investor does not have to bother so much about taking all of the risk. Again, we will still talk about syndication. Sometimes the Sukuk process takes a while, six months. I just want to go to a Lotus Bank or Giants Bank and say, let's do this $10 billion transaction. Just five of us. We bring $2 billion each. And then we're done with it. Um, okay, so again, for Takafu market to do 3% by 2025, it means uh, we need to do a lot more. Look at the part in red. Um, at that last quarter, before this quarter, well, first quarter of this year, we actually have just barely... 0.717% in that's fund six. That is, if you have a if you have pension, you will be able to go to your pension administrator and say, hey, can you invest my money in non-interest financial institution? Well, we only have point, point 0.2, less than point 0.2. Now the exact amount is 23 billion. That is tiny, extremely tiny. His Royal Highness Oba Omobolang Lawal Abisogun II, the Nero of Iruland, in his goodwill message inform stakeholders on investment opportunities in Iruland. I'm very happy with what we have done, bringing this stakeholders engagement to my kingdom. Iru Kingdom is the financial hub of Nigeria. And this is where we have more than 40% of the people that are in former employment residents. I'm sure if we could do a lot in terms of raising the 
the mortgage industry. That would definitely bring a lot of positive externality to the economy. And uh, a lot of people, as it is being done in other advanced economies, if you are guaranteed a mortgage, you can always borrow against that mortgage to raise capital for other things, which will invariably raise the socioeconomic profile of the country. Mr. Olanio, a consultant to Oniru community, gave a broad presentation on the opportunities in Iru land, such as investment in real estate, healthcare, sustainable environment, transportation, culture, and tourism. First set of opportunities has to do with real estate. And I think it's important for us to know that, um, I, I mean, I'll give you some statistics. Two years ago, uh, property values within the estate were hovering around 180,000 naira per square meter. Today, we're talking about no less than 375,000 naira per square meter. So we've got opportunities that exist for people who want to do JVs. Uh, for instance, I'm sure a lot of you have seen the Coptic Hospital around the corner that was built in record time. Um, so clearly, there's several, several opportunities for people who want to invest in here. Um, so, well, when His Royal Majesty came on board, you might wonder what legit means. Let's grow Iru Kingdom together. So he came up with this and, um, of course, street lights, the beach. I know a lot of younger folks here have been to the beach. There's a lot going on there and there's still a lot of opportunities for those who are interested in investing. There are plans already to have this Oniru Royal Community Hospital. I'm sure this is the kind of hospital where as you approach it, your illness will disappear because of the kind of edifice that it is. So um, this is in the pipeline. There are opportunities for investment. Um, there isn't time to discuss this in detail, but definitely anyone or any group or any body that is looking to invest, um, I can assure you, that there are great opportunities in here, and it will be money well spent. The event featured presentation from panelists from Hajara Adiola MDC Lotus Capital, who spoke on differentiating non-interest portfolios from non-interest funds, and Mr. Atairu Mashido, MDC 117 Capital, who spoke on risk, private to cook with practical cases in Nigeria. It really boils down to two major differences. Um, the first is a matter of um, regulation. Uh, and oversight. For a fund, uh, it's actually a collective um, collective product where investments are pooled, funds are pooled together. It has to be regulated and registered with the Securities and Exchange Commission. Um, there are many, many rules governing how it operates. You must have a, a trustee. Uh, you must have a trust deed which governs the fund. You must have a custodian. Um, you must have an auditor. The funds are audited on an annual basis. Um, and you normally have what you call a net asset value and units, um, units. So you can have a very little, very low subscription amount, as 5,000, 10,000 naira, and you pull together with a lot, lot of other people under a regulated and supervised um, structure managed by a professional fund manager who's also registered by, by the Securities and Exchange Commission to invest. And then there are very clear um, asset classes that the SEC recognizes is either fixed income or equity fund, or a balance fund, which is a combination, or real estate uh, fund nowadays, um, or ETFs, exchange traded funds. On the other side, you have a portfolio, um, as Dr. Rashir mentioned. And a portfolio is just uh, a managed investment. It could be individual. In most cases, that is um, why it's uh, created. More high net worth individuals usually requires a higher threshold, minimum amount of investment. Um, and the portfolio is constructed for you and it's more likely to be customized to your particular preferences. Um, it can also be discretionary or non-discretionary, meaning you either leave the decision-making, investment decision-making to the fund manager under the framework of an investment policy statement, or you ask to be involved in every investment decision. So you can say, well, I only want real estate, or I have a family uh, investment pool, and this is what we want to invest in. We want to invest in private equity, private companies, or stocks, or bonds, or international. Uh, or just the Nigerian stocks. What are the things that can go back? 
keep aside in the systemic risk usually being associated by both instruments. The unsystemic risk related to Sukuk may be related to the Sharia non-compliance risk where the contracts that are supposed to be provided probably is not fit into that particular structure. Example, so Daniel just explained the CP. Which contracts can you use in order to do a short-term CP? But of course, you have to be mindful of also the tradability if there is need with respect to that. You can do it with respect to Murabaha. But is Murabaha also a tradable instrument? You have to look at what can you do in terms of, if I say Murabaha, I mean cost plus the profit mark of sales, which is usually what they do for the CP or a short-term lease. It depends on the tradability. What are the things that can go back? Keep aside in the systemic risk usually being associated by both instruments. The unsystemic risk related to Sukuk may be related to the Sharia non-compliance risk where the contracts that are supposed to be provided probably is not fit into that particular structure. Liquidity risk is there. If you want to sell, who are you going to sell to? Also, it's something that you will be uh, have, having some challenges. But put all these things together, whatever the case may be, if it is asset-backed, meaning you can have recourse to the asset, not to the issuer, you can always have something in return with respect to the value of your investment that you've done. Other experts who provided the interventions at the panel sessions include Suru Daniels, MD CEO, Afri Invest Capital Limited, who addressed structuring Sharia compliant commercial papers, Umani Amin, managing partner, Metropolitan Law Firm, Sharia contracts required in Injara, Sukuk, and Murabaha CPs, while the representative of Lotus Bank, Mr. B. Yogundepo, head treasury, spoke on syndication in Islamic finance, while Toga Baburoglu, deputy chairman, Wazobia, gave a presentation on dynamics of the real estate and tourism projects. Alaji Mohamed bin Tube, His Royal Majesty Oba Omobolan Lawal Abisogun, the near of Iruland, Suru Daniels, B. Yogundekbo, and Dr. Bashar Oshodi all speak further about the non-interest finance industry as a whole and projecting the future of non-interest capital market, the prospects and expectations. Islamic finance or non-interest finance in Nigeria started on a very steep uh, hill, uphill climb. But after a lot of efforts, a lot of collaboration with, within the all the industry sectors, the support of the regulators, particularly the Central Bank, the NDIC, the Security Exchange Commission, DMO, etc. Uh, I am proud to say we have made significant progress in terms of Islamic finance growth and development in Nigeria. I want to use this opportunity to commend the organizers, Trust Bank, for coming up with this uh, discussion of stakeholders' engagement. And I'm, I'm very optimistic that uh, in, in the next uh, few years, we will, we will see the impact. We have started feeling the impact in certain areas, but it's still very infinitesimal compared with what is being done in other places. You know, I mean, we should, we should take advantage of the global uh, uh, the globalization, the financial instrument globalization, the opportunities there. So I'm, I'm optimistic. The non-interest finance space is quite new in Nigeria, I mean, relatively. And there is the possibility of creating short-term instruments, commercial papers and notes that can be Sharia compliant and also listed on the FMDQ and other recognized trade exchanges. Our view is that that part of the market is totally underutilized and it's about time we begin to look at it and then give, provide guidance um, to, to, to issuers. As, as a firm at Afri Invest, we believe we have the capacity to deliver on those kind of services, and that's part of what I've talked about. You know, we are talking about risk. As long as you are in the investment arena, you can avoid yourself from the risk. Either systemic risk that will definitely affect the industry you are, or unsystemic risk that may be in relation to either the, the, that particular instrument or the managers of the instrument or the company, whatever the case. When we are talking about the private sukuk, therefore we are referring to this unsystemic risk that may affect the issuance of sukuk because we've seen it before in Dubai and some other places where actually some of the sukuk defaulted 
because of some reasons based on their structure. Maybe the structure, there is Sharia, non-compliance issue or some other things that may crop up from the structure that has been actually ignored. Now, it may also happen in Nigeria, therefore we have to be careful with respect to that. Individually, there might, not be, there might be transactions we're not able to finance on our own, but once we all come together, we're able to finance big ticket transactions and that is something that has been, that is not very common. I think maybe because one, maybe the banks are not big enough or maybe because the transactions are, are too big, but it's something that as we collaborate more and more, we get more accustomed to it in terms of the nuances about it and it becomes a normal, everyday thing in the market because that's what's happened to conventional banks. I think over the years, um, I mean, we started Islamic banking, Islamic finance, not just finance, since 2009. And then, of course, the guidelines started to come in um, and only until 2011, before the central bank released the final guideline and they licensed the first two banks then, a window and a full-fledged bank. And between that time and now, you know, every time I sleep on it, I just think, has there really been growth? I really get worried about that. Yes, you've done a lot of work. You know, all the regulations have come up with guidelines. Nigeria has more guidelines than almost every country in the world in terms of Islamic finance. So we have a lot of guys. So the regulators have done very well. So the regulators have, I mean, I'll give them 100 or 100, right? Now, for the market operators, yes, we're not doing badly. There's growth. There's growth because, you know, Islamic banks have increased gradually. Um, capital is increasing. Those doing asset management, they've increased. Um, um, five years ago, you probably had just one company doing an Islamic fund or Shara compliant fund. Now you have loads of them, you know. So yes, it's prospect. Sukuk has not done badly. However, you know, I want them compare quickly with what you have in the conventional space. You know, the speed of growth is what I'm then bothered about, and that's what has led me to do this. And I just thought to myself that how can we make it grow even faster by collaborating? Because at the end of the day. You know, we can't, you can't have all the strengths. You, know, you can't have everything. So if, if, if you have a million ideas, if you have all the ideas in this world, and you don't have people to truly support you, then you won't be able to achieve your desired goal or your expected goal. You know, and that's why I thought, okay, you know what? Let's have a lot of ideas, but let's bring everybody together. You know, let's bring, bring those that have been existing for more than 20 years. Let's talk to them, you know, the banks, you know, have, you know, maybe a lot more funds. You know, let's look at those with projects. How can we all then collaborate to get these things done? And that, that's the primary focus. We they hope that um, it can increase growth a little more aggressively than what we have right now. Over the years, the non-interest finance market in Nigeria has been growing steadily with guidelines put in place. The Trust Bank Arthur Limited Maiden Investment Forum provides an avenue for the Islamic capital market to achieve scale, attract foreign direct investments, improve social impact, collaborate, increase digital capital market instruments and products, and improve the consciousness of Makassid al-Sharia.